I'm Norman Harden. I'm the director of the Center for Pain Studies at the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago, uh, and I am professor uh, at Northwestern University in the Department of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation and the Department of Physical Therapy and Human Movement Sciences. Uh, my research focus has always been uh, complex regional pain syndrome. The diagnosis we're talking about today has gone by many names. It's been called reflex sympathetic dystrophy, causalgia, but finally in the mid-90s uh, we decided to use a more general uh, diagnostic name, complex regional pain syndrome. There was no diagnostic criteria uh, at the time, uh, but the idea was that we were going to develop such, and after 15 years of hard work, we've developed a criteria uh, and derived it statistically so that it will be most applicable to uh, patients with this diagnosis uh, internationally. Complex regional pain syndrome is uh, characterized by uh, pain that is disproportionate to the original lesion or injury or the healing process. Uh, that's in the mind of the doctor that makes the diagnosis. But it also is uh, usually characterized by disturbance of the autonomic nervous system or the automatic nervous system that controls blood flow to the limbs. Uh, we also do see the motor uh, abnormalities which are ubiquitous. The statistical derivation of the new criteria was uh, codified in Budapest. There were three, a series of three meetings uh, in Budapest that uh, were designed to uh, develop consensus around the criteria uh, and thus the uh, criteria is sometimes now called the Budapest criteria. Uh, it has been recently adopted by the International Association for the Study of Pain or the IASP uh, so it is properly called the new IASP criteria however uh, in the literature it's still often called Budapest. The Budapest or the new uh, IASP criteria uh, has two different forms. Uh, the first, uh, more sensitive form, is the uh, clinical criteria, which requires three symptom factors and two sign factors. The statistics told us that there were four factors uh, involved in the diagnosis. The first being uh, the pain factor. Um, the second being a vasomotor factor, meaning a temperature and color change factor. Uh, the third factor was actually two. It was the um, uh, pseudomotor factor and the edema factor. They locked up statistically uh, and perhaps physiologically. And then the fourth factor was uh, a new factor uh, that wasn't included in the uh, original CRPS diagnostic uh, idea, which was the motor factor uh, and the motor changes that are ubiquitous in the disease. Uh, also, uh, dystrophic factors locked, uh, uh, locked into that. So there are four factors, uh, and we can find signs and symptoms in both. Uh, the idea uh, of uh, our diagnostic criteria uh, is that these are simple, accessible. Any doctor anywhere in any clinic uh, can derive these diagnostic criteria. Uh, so hopefully we will move the ball forward in terms of early diagnosis uh, and helping our patients get the care that they need uh, sooner rather than later. In the history, we will be looking for symptoms. Uh, the first uh, symptom group that we will uh, identify is pain. Again, the pain is disproportionate to the expected lesion. Uh, uh, however, they will also talk about uh, allodynia and hyperpathia. The allodynia, of course, is the innocuous stimuli that is now painful, and they will tell you that light touch or, or even air blowing on the part, uh, sometimes warm water or cool, uh, will cause a great increase in the pain. Uh, they will also tell you symptoms of hyperpathia. Hyperpathia, of course, is uh, normally painful stimuli that is now exaggerated or prolonged. Uh, and they will relate things like uh, uh, IV starts that are incredibly painful, uh, or they may bang their toe, and their toe, it will hurt for uh, a, long, uh, a long period of time uh, or be extremely painful. The next, uh, the next factor that we will be looking for in terms of symptoms is vasomotor symptoms. Uh, these, of course, will be characterized by color change uh, and temperature change of the affected part. Uh, the third factor uh, will be pseudomotor uh, uh, changes, which, of course, the patient will relate that they have uh, hyperhidrosis or increased sweating or decreased sweating uh, on the affected part. Um, and uh, edema. Uh, they will say that the part swells. 
the fourth factor is motor changes, uh, and this can be all the way from weakness uh, to violent jerks or myoclonic jerking. Uh, uh, there can be um, uh, dystonia, uh, and the patient, of course, will relate that uh, symptomatically. Uh, and then the last uh, part of the fourth factor will be dystrophic changes. This will be changes in nails, hair, skin, or the patient may relate the history that a doctor has mentioned there are changes on x-rays. Patients may relate that the pain has spread from the site of the original injury. Usually it will start in a limb and the signs and symptoms needed to make the diagnosis are regional. Uh, but the pain uh, or some of the symptoms can sometimes march up the limb uh, uh, going from distal to proximal. Uh, however, usually the signs and symptoms sufficient to make the diagnosis do not uh, spread all over the body. However, the pain can spread all over, over the body on the basis of central sensitization from the regional pain syndrome. In doing the physical examination for complex regional pain syndrome, it's important to start with a good general history and physical to rule out other diagnoses that may masquerade as complex regional pain syndrome. Uh, you will note that uh, in the spirit of uh, ease and accessibility, that the equipment needed to do CRPS diagnosis uh, is, is very simple. Uh, and available in any clinic anywhere. After conducting the history to look for the four factors uh, in terms of symptoms, uh, we will now look for the four finds in terms of signs. Uh, the first uh, factor is the uh, sensation and pain factor. Uh, for this, we will examine first the uh, non-affected part, uh, and then we will examine the affected part. To do light touch, you can use a, a Kleenex such as this. Uh, affected part versus unaffected part, um, uh, or you can use light touch just from your fingers. Uh, the question to the patient is, is this painful uh, or is this sensation somehow abnormal? Uh, the second part uh, of the sensation exam uh, is pinprick. Now this is uh, normally painful, but if the pain is exaggerated or prolonged, uh, this is hyperpathia. Uh, and to do this, uh, again, you would, uh, you would do the affected part versus the unaffected part. Uh, again, the question is, is that painful uh, and is that pain prolonged? Uh, we also need to uh, test for allodynia to temperature. Uh, uh, the easiest way to do that is to use a tuning fork. The tuning fork can be put under warm or cold water, uh, and it will maintain that temperature actually for a good while. Uh, again, you will check the unaffected and the affected part uh, and the patient is to say whether that temperature change, either warm or cool, is painful. We will use the 128 tuning fork, now that we have it out, to check the large fibers. Now, the large fibers normally would mediate proprioception and movement uh, of, the, uh, of the joints, uh, but also they mediate uh, uh, the large fiber perception uh, such as vibration in a joint. Uh, and again, we ask the uh, patient uh, to compare the unaffected to the affected side uh, and if that's painful. The next factor of interest uh, is temperature and color. Uh, and this is simply by observation. Uh, the observation of color changes side to side, affected versus unaffected, should be noted and documented. Uh, and also temperature. Uh, should be assessed uh, at the bedside using the dorsum of the hand, which has more, more temperature receptors. Uh, and you place the dorsum on the affected part and the unaffected part to see if there's a, a temper, temperature differential. The third factor uh, of interest is edema and swelling. Uh, edema first is, uh, uh, can be observed if it's gross. Uh, however, if, uh, if it's subtle, uh, you can either Put your hands around the affected part to see if there's a, a difference in the excursion of your fingers, or you could use a tape measure. Uh, the sweating uh, component, again, is observational, uh, but you can test this with, uh, with your hand, or you can use the 128 tuning port and drag it over the affected part. If there is increased sweating one side versus the other, the tuning fork will move more, uh, more easily with less friction. The fourth factor of interest is the motor component. 
Uh, first, uh, this is observational, looking for atrophy uh, or, of course, uh, abnormal movements like myoclonus uh, or uh, uh, dystrophic changes. Uh, next, the patient will be asked to uh, squeeze, uh, squeeze as hard as you can uh, and release. Uh, and then you could, uh, in this instance, check the, uh, uh, the strength at the uh, wrist, push against my hand, push against my hand, push against my hand, push against my hand. And this should be recorded using the Canadian zero to four system uh, of power. Uh, the last part of the fourth factor uh, to observe is nails, hair patterns, side to side again, uh, the skin, whether it's either coarse or cracked or dry or friable. Uh, uh, and then finally, uh, you may corroborate some of these uh, dystrophic changes using uh, something like a plain x-ray to look for osteopenia. It is thought that the early diagnosis and identification of CRPS is critical for successful treatment. It is uh, a disease that do never comes to us as, as specialists usually until six months. However, uh, if at three months there is still delayed healing or disproportionate pain, uh, it's time to start thinking about this and considering the possibility of a specialty referral. The diagnosis of complex regional pain syndrome is not subtle. Uh, patients will come in with uh, florid pain uh, and uh, rather significant changes in the vasomotor system and the motor system. Uh, this is something that uh, all doctors everywhere should be alert to uh, and the new criteria uh, is simple and accessible, uh, hopefully, so that uh, primary care doctors can detect this early uh, and refer to uh, specialists if necessary.